Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Jamila Khairin binti Baharum. So today I'm going to present a case study about anemia in toddlers. So for introduction, Mr. S is a one-year-old Malay boy. He is the youngest among three siblings. His mother worked as a guru kafa while his father is a clerk. So Mr. S was born full term at 58 weeks and his birth weight was recorded at 3 kg which is within the normal range and currently Mr. S able to reach out to grabs, pull to stand and crawling around. For medical diagnosis and medical history, Mr. S has been diagnosed with iron deficiency anemia and her mother has medical history of anemia during pregnancy and Mr. S has been referred for dietary management. So anemia has been recognized as a serious global public health problem that where WHO has estimated that 42% of children under the age of 5 years old and 40% of the pregnant women worldwide are anemic. So anemia has been defined as a condition in which the number of red blood cells or the hemoglobin concentration within them is lower than normal. So hemoglobin is needed to carry oxygen. Thus, if there is not enough hemoglobin, there will be a decreased capacity of the blood to carry oxygen to the body's tissue. So there are many types of anemia which include iron deficiency anemia. So this type which is iron deficiency anemia happen when the body has lack of iron to produce red blood cells. So this can be caused by blood loss, lack of iron in, in diet and inability to absorb iron. So examples of risk factors include children ages 1 to 5 that drink more than 24 ounces of cow's milk, goat's milk or soy milk a day will increase the risk of getting iron deficiency anemia. So for photophysiology, the causes such as lack of iron in diet, inability to absorb iron and blood loss will lead to depletions of iron stores which will eventually cause the iron deficiency anemia. So these are the diet diagnosis relation. There are two types of food that we need to aware and the first one is the food that enhance the iron absorption and the second one is the food that inhibit iron absorption. So example of food that enhance iron absorption include vitamin C, vitamin A and beta carotene containing food. Next is food that inhibit iron absorption. Example is calcium, phytic containing food and polyphenol containing food. So for evaluation, in one study, it was shown that anemia could be diagnosed with a detailed history which include prenatal period, nutrition, times of starting, best milk and solid foods, and lastly is bleeding history. So apart from that, signs of anemia should also be looked for. So laboratory tests will also be used to diagnose anemia. The primary action is to order complete blood count and peripheral blood smear. In blood count, hemoglobin and hematocrit values should be checked whether it is normal for each and gender. Besides that, value of iron should, be, should also be checked uh, by using diet history. So for medication so drugs, so Mr. S has been prescribed with syrup for the acid 1 milliliter every day. So this medication function uh, to treat folic acid deficiency and certain types of anemia, for example, is lack of free blood cells that is caused by uh, folic acid deficiency. So when consuming um, these types of medication, we need, uh, the patient needs to avoid some types of food, which is certain forms of fiber. Uh, example is red bran because it may decrease the bioavailability of certain forms of folate under some conditions. Moving on to nutritional assessment and intervention. So firstly is the anthropometry data. So Mr. S height was reported at 78 cm. His weight is reported at 9 kg and his BMI for age is at 15 kg per meter square, which is below the normal range. So for biochemical data of hemoglobin, it is reported that Mr. S hemoglobin level was below the normal value which indicate Mr. S has lack of iron containing food intake. And next is iron value. It is reported that Mr. S iron value was below the normal value, which indicate Mr. S is experiencing iron deficiency anemia. So for dietary assessment, so these are Mr. S diet history. 
So for dietary interpretation, so patient's daily total calorie intake is slightly higher than the recommendations by RNI Malaysia, which is 980 kcal per day. Next is the patient did not consume enough fruits and vegetables. He also have inadequate intake of iron-rich food such as meat, fish, eggs and chicken and dark leafy vegetables for non-fume iron sources. Next, he also have inadequate intake of food that help enhance iron absorption such as vitamin C in oranges. And lastly, he has high intake of formula milk during meal time which can reduce the absorption of iron in the body due to the calcium in the milk. So for nutrition diagnosis, firstly is inadequate mineral, which is iron intake, related to knowledge deficit as evidenced by low intake in diet history. Next is inadequate fruits and vegetables intake related to knowledge deficit as evidenced by low intake in diet history, which is less than the four servings of fruits and vegetables. So for objective, objective number one is to attain and maintain hemoglobin level as close to normal value. The second one is to increase intake of iron-rich food in daily diet. The third one to increase intake of fruits and vegetables according to recommended intake of ch for children, which is four servings per day. And the fourth one is to eat healthy and varied food in daily diet. And lastly is to reduce intake of formula milk in daily diet. Next, for the first objective principle, which is to attain and maintain hemoglobin level as close to normal value, we will educate the caregiver to provide iron-rich food for the patient. For example, our meat, eggs, chicken for him sources of iron and some green leafy vegetables and legumes for non him iron sources. We also will uh, educate caregiver to consume food that helps in iron absorption during meal time, such as vitamin C in fruits and vegetables. And lastly, we will also educate the caregiver to not provide food that inhibit the iron absorption during the meal time. However, they can provide it um, two to four hours before the meal, such as calcium in milk. So for the second objective, which is to increase intake of iron-rich food in daily diet, is by giving example of iron-rich foods to the caregiver of the patient. The second one, we will plan out menu planning that consists of iron-rich foods which caregiver can follow. So for the third objective, which is to increase intake of fruits and vegetables according to the recommended intake for children, which is four servings per day, is by educate the caregiver on the benefits of eating fruits and vegetables for the patient. The second one is giving examples of fruits and vegetables that can be given to the patient such as spinach, sawi, and citrus fruits. So for the fourth objective, the principle is to educate caregiver to include variety of healthy food to the patient, such as tempe, tofu, clams, and nuts that help to raise up the hemoglobin level in the body. And lastly, is to reduce intake of formula milk in daily diet is by educating the caregiver that high intake of formula milk may interfere in the absorption of iron in the body due to the calcium in the milk. So moving on to the tips, firstly is patient need to avoid frequent intake of formula milk as uh, calcium in the milk can inhibit the absorption of the iron. Besides that, it is not advisable to drink more than 24 ounces of milk a day as too much milk often takes the place of other food, including ones that are rich in iron. So the second one, patient can switch from formula milk to orange juice or something that is high in vitamin C, which can help increase the absorption of iron. For example, uh, foods that high uh, vitamin C is kiwi, melons, oranges, and papaya. The third one is patients need to include iron-rich food in diet that include chicken, dried lentils, peas and beans, fish, meat, whole grain bread, bread and spinach. The fourth one is iron-rich food should be taken at least twice a day to boost iron intake. And the last one is patients need to avoid food that can reduce the absorption of iron that include foods containing phytate, for example, is whole grains and soy. 
um, calcium rich foods and food that contain polyphenols for example is tea and coffee two to four hours before meal that contain iron rich food so for menu planning um, firstly is determine the calorie need so I use two different formula which is one uh, from the FAO, WHO, NUE, NUU. Um, and the second one is from RNI Malaysia. So for menu planning, we will, we will base on the RNI Malaysia as it is more accurate for Malaysian students. So next is the macronutrients distribution table. So based on the REE of 980 kcal per day, so I divided the uh, micronutrients uh, for carbohydrate is 55%, protein is 50% and fat is 30%. So these are the uh, menu planning that has been uh, distributed. So these are the menu that the caregiver can follow. So for monitoring and evaluation, future appointment will be set up in upcoming, in upcoming two weeks to see progress. And during the next visit, biochemical tests will be performed to monitor the hemoglobin level. And caregiver also need to jot down the patient's three-day diet record to the clinic uh, and bring to the clinic to be reviewed by the nutritionist. So for discussion, in Malaysia, the prevalence of children and adolescents with iron deficiency anemia is 16.2%. And it is important to consume adequate amount of iron in our daily diet as iron is an essential mineral that helps our body to function properly. So children who are severely deficient in iron may experience delayed growth and development and they may also be prone to infections. And besides supplementations, dietary intervention is also a good approach in addressing children diagnosed with iron deficiency anemia. So according to previous study, the recommended intake uh, the recommended iron intake of toddlers can be met with naturally iron-rich foods. These foods include those with heme sources of iron, which is red meat, and non-heme sources of iron, for example, is legumes, iron-fortified cereals. So in addition to that, foods that help them hinder the absorption of iron should also be considered. So examples of foods that might enhance the iron absorption include the vitamin C in oranges and food that inhibit iron absorption include foods that contain phytic and polyphenols. So in conclusion, the patient need to follow nutritional advices and tips given where he need to consume iron-rich food and food that help in iron absorption as it can help to raise the hemoglobin level in his body. The patient need to have a normal hemoglobin level as it, as it help in growth and development. Thank you.